Every low-code application must have modules, which can be imagined as the tables that will be on the database for our application. Starting from the namespace list, we select the namespace in which we want to create a module. For example, let's select Service Solution. Once we click on Visit Namespace, we will see the homepage of the application. To add modules we must click on Admin Panel, which will take us to the administrative area of the low-code application. If we want to go back to the low-code application to use it, just click on Public Pages. As said before, every low-code application has modules, where we define what data is stored in our app. The other main menu options are, Pages, where we can define the user interface, and Charts, where we can build rich charts that use the data for modules, and which can be presented on Pages. Let's click on Modules to start creating our new module. We click on New Module, and then we enter the module name. A good practice for naming the modules is to use singular names with a capital letter, which is consistent with the Corteza convention. The handle will be used by the automation scripts, so it cannot have special characters or spaces. We will enter the name of the module without special characters or spaces. Let's create the fields now. First we create an item name field. The name cannot have spaces or special characters, because it is used by the system. In title we set the value that will be shown in the user interface as a label for this field. If we click on the arrows we see the available field types. In this case we select text input because we want to store the name of the item as a string. Click on the wrench icon to access the configuration pop-up. All the fields have the general tab and it has pretty much the same elements for all the field types. We can set if the field is required. If we do this the field cannot be empty. We can also set if the field should allow multiple values. If we need it, we can set a default value for this field. The second tab is always specific for the field type, in this case we have string. If we enable multi-line, we will allow text spanning over multiple lines. This can be done for a descriptive field for example. Also, we have the option to use a rich text editor if we want additional formatting for our text. In our case, we will store just an item name, so we won't need to mark these options. Let's click on Save and Close to confirm. On the side you can see that the checkbox will reflect our choices. Let's create a description field. We set the name and the title. And select text input. Since this is a description field, this time we will enable multi-line and the rich text editor. Let's create a numeric field for the price of the items. We set the name and the title. And select number input. As you see the general options are the same. We enter 0 as the default value. And we go on to number. You can set a prefix, for example a dollar sign, if you want to have the dollar sign before, at the start of the number. You can alternatively use the suffix, if you like the currency sign after the number. With a prefix or suffix like these we just set, you show to the user that the number is a currency. But, you can also, for example, use prefixes or suffixes such as percent, kilograms, euro, kilometer per hour, or even employees. In this case we set dollar sign as a prefix. Precision sets how many numbers behind the comma are stored in the database. Let's set it to 2. 
With format you have additional visualization options, for example we set 0.00 which is typical for a currency. You can also see some examples at the end of this form. The next field we want to add is a multiple selection field, which will be used for the available colors of the item. And we will choose select dropdown as the field type. We use the select tab to create the input options. The first is the value actually stored in the database. The second the label that will be shown. We also want to create a field for the state of the item by using a checkbox field. This field behaves as a boolean, and will allow only two values. In this case we enter in stock and out of stock as options. Let's insert a date and time field, which will allow us to create a field to record the expiry date. Here you can choose between multiple visualization options, you can set, date only, time only, date and time combined and so on. Finally, we can also have calculated fields. Say that we want to have the discounted price shown to the user automatically. First we create a discount field, with a percent suffix. We also set the default value to zero. Now, we are ready to add a field that calculates the discounted price, related to the percentage shown here. We will call it price with discount. And we select a number input. We click on field value expression. And we enter the expression to be calculated based on the field names we set. Price times 1 minus discount divided by 100. This field will be calculated automatically by using this expression. Now, we have created all the fields that we need for our My Item module. Last we click on Save and Close. The next step will be to create the user interface, which we will show in the following videos.